switch construct just like if is a i mean uh, conditional branching statement so based on certain condition here control can be getting branched off so switch is one such construct just like if okay switch takes here some expression that expression can return a value here normally we take here either integers or enums or say byte or character data okay here we can pass to the switch expression a character type of data or it can be integer type of data or you can use here enum data or byte data we can use any of them with the switch case so using switch case we do multi way branching normally switch is written this way here we put he, this way expression case value 1 then we have here statement or statements it may be one statement or it may be more than one statement then you can have here break similarly we use here case value 2 okay these are going to be constants only here these are going to be definitely constants then here we put it is statement or statements like this we can put then this is here break like this you can write n number of cases you can go with n number of cases at the end if you would like to add a default you can add the default here it can be statement or statements like this normally we have a switch case switch we give an expression this expression returns here the values we specify here whenever the value is matching those statements they get executed those statements are going to be getting executed so otherwise if if suppose value 1 is not matching it tries with value 2 value 2 is not matching it tries with value 3 like that how many cases you have written that many are tried if none of none of them are matching in such cases it goes to default provided provided that you have a default uh, i mean in the switch if you write default part then in that case it gets executed otherwise simply we come out from the switch construct when none of the cases are true in such cases it comes to default when none of the cases are actually matching in such cases we come to default that too if you provide a default so if you don't provide any default simply you come out from the switch expression so switch case so switch followed by here expression we give this can be monomial or binomial whatever type of expression you want to put you can put there but it should be a character type of data or it should be like integer type of data or it can be enum or it can be a byte data like that we enter here so switch it, it can be evaluating various things like value 1 value 2 it can be that way okay now here let us write a program using switch another program let us try to make in this this is here it is commission rep commission dot java we created project now let us try to create here some other application okay so here there is a project name a source rep commission okay in the sales it is i'm closing all i create here a new project go with the java project here and here i give the name as so this is switch usage project name is we use here java sc 1.8 click on this then finish here let us create a new class called as switch example let me create here class name it as switch example it is a switch example this contains here a main method finish now let me write here the code i'm going to be writing the code in this okay so here i want to write now suppose what happens here we enter say 
some character vowels we here um, instead of using vowels i try to use here the week days so we enter a value for week days from 0 to 7 we enter 0 to 6 we enter or 1 to 7 we enter a value okay or else we can make it getting picked up computer can pick actually a random number that is going to be 1 to 7 so if it is picking a value between 1 to 7 so in such cases if it is 1 we print it as sunday if it is 1 we print mon uh, if it is 2 we print monday if it is 3 we print tuesday like that we need to print so if it is other than those we should go to otherwise so using random class let us make it import then java dot here util in the util package we have it followed by star then here let me make one random object random it is object rand this equal to here new random i create like this an object i create here random object followed by i would like to generate a number some number i would like to generate here so for that int num equal to I would like to pick up some random number. I pick a value up to ten in this. Here, object rand, then dot next int. I want to go with some next integer. Then here, I would like to say up to some ten. So it, it picks now a value between zero to eleven. Now here we use the switch case. Go with the switch. Then here, write this one as. num num has to be evaluated here num can be variable here but when we go with the case at the time it can't be variable it must be definitely a constant value we put their case followed by one so in the case of one we print here system dot we print here this one system dot then out dot print ln we print this as here sunday followed by we put a break we print it as break similarly we use here the seven times the cases we use it is case 2 we print this as monday here in the same manner we go with this then it is 3 write this one as tuesday then we use here case 4 here it is wednesday we write in the same way we go with the case 5 here here it is thursday in the same manner we go with this then we write here this one as 6 then write this one friday at the end we write this as saturday after that we go with the default then here it is you cannot duplicate these things seven we take then we write and now when it's saturday when it's seven it prints saturday then we go with the default so here we print system dot then out dot print ln print this as invalid day selected like this we here print the message so this is the program it can pick a number between 0 and 10 suppose if it's picking 0 it comes to default part similarly if it's picking some 8 9 10 even in such cases it comes to default part 
but if it's picking one it prints sunday if it's picking two it prints monday if it's picking three it's tuesday like this you can write n number of cases there is no limitation on the number of cases here you can go you can write n number of cases how many cases you want to write that many cases can be written here but at the end we have here default here it prints invalid day selected when it's not matching 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that means if the value is 0 or if it's greater than 7 so in such cases it's going to print this one okay now let us run this what happens see with the result invalid day selected it says once again let us run it says Wednesday but what day is picked we don't know therefore print here system dot then write out dot println here we write as the numeric weekday is so we need to print here the numeric weekday is we have to print this one as num but when it is whenever it is a whenever the number is in the range between 1 and 7 so therefore put an if condition if it is then write here okay so fine fine now we don't write any if here it's going to be printing the weekday the picket the picket up num so here this may print sunday monday tuesday or else it may print it as invalid day selected just run this it says the weekday is 2 it prints it as monday again if we run the picked up picked up numeric day is 10 invalid day selected it gives message like this similarly when it's 1 it's giving sunday okay now invalid day selected again because 9 is not a proper day in that you can take a value from 1 to 7. So whenever it is below 1 or whenever it is above 9, 7, in such cases, we get the value as invalid day selected. Okay. Now here, see, why we need to use break here, see, in this. I just comment the break and what happens, see, with that. I'm going to comment it and try to execute what happens, see, in this. So it is selecting 2, that's why it is coming fine. But if it selects selects 1, what will happen? C. So I try with 4. Now this is hotter day. It's picking here. If I pick 1 accidentally, what will happen? See the result. It's not picking actually 1. So it's picking 2 Monday. It's picking 3 only. But when we pick here, some 1, what happens? C. Weekday 0 is selected, invalidates coming up there. Okay. In the case of 10 also, it's same. But when it's picking actually some 7, what happens C? Now even here also I remove the break. With the 2 also I remove break. Even with the 3 also I remove break. What will happen C with that? What happens if there is no break? Just C in this. Okay. This time again I run. It's giving 5. Again I run this. 6 it's giving. Run this. 8 invalidate. That is fine. So again, yet we got, okay, then now it's not giving, okay, up to 4 it's giving, but it's not picking actually any 2. So if you pick 2, at least you can get at the time, invalid day selected, okay, even there also we are not getting it. It's always picking those only. Let us remove these, break and see what will happen with this. In, when in 0, that is okay. Even again, it's picking 0. Now see here, when the option is 3, what it is doing, print, doing there? So when it is 3, it's printing Tuesday, it's printing Wednesday, it's printing Thursday, it's printing Friday, because we are not using break. So why we use break is to come out from that. Otherwise, next cases automatically, they get executed. If you don't put break, what is happening here? The value selected is 3. Since there is no break, what happens? After executing this, the control goes to case 4. 
Even the case four also there is no break. Therefore, it comes to case six. So like this, this happens. In order to stop, to I mean, in order to come out from the break, we need to use. In order to come out from the case, whenever it's matching, we need to use the break. If there is no break, what is happening here? It's printing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday all because case three is Tuesday. After executing that, without coming out from that, without breaking, it is trying to execute the fourth. Fourth is getting executed. Even there is no break here. It comes to five. This part is also getting executed. Then it comes to six. Like this, after six, it is stopping here since we have a break. So therefore, break is here. Must actually once we execute that part, we need to break it. So for that, here we use the break keyword. So without break, what happens? After executing concerned case, rest of the cases also may be getting executed. In order to stop such things from happening, you must use here break keyword. So with break, we we actually end up there. So after if it is one, we need to print Sunday, then we need to come out. If we go with the case two also, it gives some improper result. In order to print the correct day, we use this. Now it's giving Monday this time. Now when you run here, it's giving Friday. So like this, we are getting exact days in this exact day we get with this. So therefore, this is called as a switch case. So here this number, this can be byte data, it can be integer data, it can be even here enum data, or it can be character data. You can take any of those. So here you can evaluate them. You can evaluate them here with numbers. I tried. Similarly, you can try with the characters. Now here, see, I want to pick some characters here. So the characters for that I use a array. I declare an array this way. Char followed by I put like here. C array. I can pick like this C array. This equal to here. This way I initialize. I put here A. Then similarly, I put here O. Then I put here, this one is U, okay, A E also we should have here, okay, like this, I take here A E I O U, so this way I am picking here, I am, I am creating here an array which contains these six characters, five characters. A is the first character, E is the second character, I is the third character, O is the fourth character, U is the fifth character. This is called as an array. Array contains here similar type of data. In the array, we contain similar type of data. All these are nothing but characters. So this is a single dimensional array. In the single dimensional array, we have this many characters. A, E, I, O, U. We have these characters. Okay, it's containing here these five different characters. We have here A, E, I, O, U. Arrays are what exactly? These are, I mean, uh, these are similar. These, this is nothing but collection of similar data. It's a collection of similar data. This is here collection or say aggregation with the similar type of data. It is all characters in this. So they are called as here homogeneous data. It contains same data in the given array. But instead of declaring individual variables with one name only, we can refer these. To get the very first element, we need to use index zero. For next element, we need to use one. For this, you need to use two. For this, you need to use three. And for this, you need to use four. And to find out the length, that means how many elements are in this, we can use length method. Le length property we have. So using length property, we can find out how many elements are in this. Now I have picked actually this particular thing. Now here total how many elements we have? There are four elements in this. There are going to be four elements. Now randomly again I pick here any of those four elements, then that I try to evaluate. What character it is, I try to do with the switch case. Again, I use here, I am picking on that some random number. Now this time, num equal to, I put this way, num equal to, I write this one as rand, uh, new, this is, what is the random I created object? It is here, object R A N D. I write this way, then dot, it is going to be next int. I can use any value from 0 to 5, 0 to 4. Therefore, I give this as here 5. It can pick any number between 0 and 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it can pick. Now declare here a character. 
then CH this is going to be here C array of I put here num it's going to pick actually that particular character num value can be either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 so if I give 0 I get A if it is 1 we get E then if we give 2 it's going to be giving I if it is 3 it's going to give O if it is 4 it can give you U so like this it can pick some character now let us use here switch case for this switch followed by here CH I put I'm going to put here CH then here I try to display that here write case first thing is I take here A I'm going to use this as A here okay so this is going to be A then in this I print system dot out dot println it is A we print, we print like this it is A we print but since this is actually a string these are escape sequences you have to use in that without escape sequence you cannot do it this A we are trying to show in double quotes let us show in the double quotes this A like this then followed by we need to put here a break we have to put break here similarly next thing is here case we need to go with the E because A E I O we use this is here E and this is going to be E we put like this then similarly it is here E I we use this is going to be I and I put here I like this okay in the same way we go with the O here this is O we need to print here O the last one is going to be U here we print the last one as here U so this is case U I put it should be picking now here U like this I try to evaluate okay what is happening on the top I created a character array which contains here total five elements the very first element you can access using zero index subsequent elements you can be accessing here like one two three four so total number of elements are how many five but the very first element you can access using zero and the very last element length minus one length how much it is here is five number of characters are going to be five length can give you how many characters are in that in this given array it's a character array so what i do here i can pick a random number here num object r and d dot next int five so this is going to pick a value between zero and four some value we pick so therefore here ch or ch equal to c array here for the num I, either it can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 so depending on the num here it's going to pick a character if it is 0 a comes there so if it is 1 you have there actually e so if it is 2 you have i if it is 3 you get o and if it is 4 you are going to get u so like that you are going to be picking here some a e i o u some character you are going to pick that we are assigning in the ch now here switch ch you are evaluating it if it is a it prints here it is a if it is e it prints here e if it is i it's going to print it as i if it is o it prints it as o if it is u then you get u so like this using switch case we are evaluating here the characters now run this it is i it is saying for the first one it is saying invalid a selected but for the second case it is saying i so subsequently it is saying here E selected. Now similarly it is saying now again I selected. So it is saying this time O. So this way it is actually selecting characters from the given array here. So this is an example for the switch case. It is for the switch case. So using switch case we are doing with the characters as well as with the integers. But this switch case seldom it is used. It's not regularly used actually in Java programming, but if you want to use this, you can use. So this is here a switch case. So this is one of the selection statements. We have two selection statements. In fact, three we have. The first one is a conditional operator. Second one is a if condition and third one is here switch case. Okay. Next thing we discuss about the arrays. 
we need to discuss about the sorry uh, not arrays first we discuss about the loops we discuss about the loops or these are going to be here iterative statements it is all here loops or iterative either we can say loop or we can say iterative so as far as java is concerned we have here four different types of loops the first one is while loop okay while followed by expression we put here okay so while expression if the expression is returning a true value the statements what we write inside the while loop they get executed okay so whatever statements we have in the while loop they get executed if the i mean expression is returning a true true value so as long as expression returns true value these statements they get executed this is a while loop to even to enter into loop the expression must be returning true value then only we enter inside the loop so the loop executes i mean as long as the expression is returning true so if expression is returning true value then only this while loop executes otherwise while loop will not execute sometimes what happens you need to come out uh, come out from the loop i mean forcefully some sometimes you need to come out okay sometimes you have to come out from the while loop forcefully that means what abruptly we need to end while loop so in such cases you may use break statement here we put optional this is going to be here a break you can use a break or you can use even a condition a, a continue even even continue also can be a i mean uh, it it is also going to be op optional so sometimes you can use break in the case of break what happens you totally come out from the loop but in the case of continue suppose you have few statements okay those statements are getting executed after that by skipping the rest of the statements you can go back to again beginning of the loop so that way you can use continue both break and continue you can use within the while loop so break forcefully exits the loop whereas continue what happens after continue also you have few statements without executing it jumps to the beginning of the loop again so both break and continue you can use with all the loops you have four loop four loops actually so in the four loops you can use both break as well as continue okay in the case of break what happens you come out from the loop so without loop is naturally i mean getting ended abruptly we close the statement i mean uh, loop using break but in the case of continue what happens in in the while loop you may be having number of statements but somewhere in the middle you have written a continuous statement so what happens in such cases rest of the statements they skip they, they skip it actually again you go to the beginning of the loop so both break and continue based on a condition we do with an if condition normally we use both break break as well as continue so the this is called as while loop similar to the while loop we have here do while we write like this do then followed by here a while loop while followed by expression we have but here what happens irrespective of the given expression at least once we come into loop since the condition is not actually the beginning it's at the ending so once we enter into loop we execute statements then at the end what we do we try to i mean if the expression is returning true value further we continue otherwise we don't continue here so this is exactly what a do while loop so using do while loop what we do we perform similar operation just like the while loop that means we execute statements repeatedly but here irrespective of the condition at least once we start the loop so once we enter into loop irrespective of the condition here so whether expression is returning a true or false irrespective of that at least once we enter into loop here but in the while loop when expression is returning true value then only we enter into the loop otherwise we just skip the loop part but here what happens expression may be returning a false value but at least once we enter into loop then after that we continue there so this way this is here a do while loop so let us discuss about these two loops while loop as well as do while now here let me write some other program to demonstrate while loop while loop program it is so inside this i demonstrate first of all the while loop this is a class in this class 
while example is the name of the class in which I have a main method. Finish it. So as we know the main method is the I mean entry point of the application. So using main method we execute the application. In the case of console applications and windows applications we depend on the main method. So both in the case of console and windows applications. If it's web application you don't have the main method. Web applications are totally different. So their model is totally different. Their architecture is totally different. There you don't have the main method. But with console applications and with windows applications we definitely use the main method. So using main method only we start application even we exit from the main method. Now here let us write some program with which we try to use here the while loop. Okay, first of all I want to find out the sum of say sum of first hundred even numbers. I want to find out the sum of first even numbers, first hundred even numbers. So for that I am going to write code. Though you have certain formulas, the formulas are what exactly? Something like say n into n plus 1 by 2 with the help of that you can do it or else you have actually when you have n terms using a plus n 2 2 a plus n minus 1 into d something like that with the help of that formula you can do it. So you have some formula with the help of that formula you can find but let us demonstrate here a loop. So let us try to declare first of all int num equal to here 2. I want to print first hundred even numbers sum int num equal to 2 I have taken. The next one here is so int then I write counter equal to 1. Okay, so this is the first counter I am taking here. Similarly int sum equal to 0 I put sum equal to 0. Then using while loop I can perform like this while then here the, the, the I mean counter what I write less than or equal to 100. I should continue this one here. I write sum equal to now sum plus followed by num. Like this I can declare. Then I write here num equal to num plus 2. This is what happens. I am incrementing every time number. At the same time even counter must be incremented here. Counter plus plus I can put. So what I am writing in this, this is here a loop. I declared here number int num equal to 2, i int counter equal to 1, int sum equal to 0. So this is containing even numbers and counter basically for counting up to 100 numbers. As long as counter is less than or equal to 100, we try to add the numbers. But once it becomes 101, what happens? We exit from the loop. So we are going to exit from loop whenever the counter becomes actually 101. Now let us print that value. Here write system dot out dot println. Okay. Before loop is starting the value of What exactly it is? The value of counter is how much for us? It is here counter. That means it, it gives us a value 1. Okay. Then here we once again print system dot out dot printer length. Then here When loop ended, the value of counter is, we have counter in that. Then followed by, we print like this, system dot, then out dot, print ln, write the sum of first hundred even numbers. even numbers is here we type the sum. So this way it should print for us. So we run a loop here while loop 
while counter less than or equal to 100 we calculate the sum here so at the end what we do we print first of all I mean whenever the loop is ending what is the value for counter initially it's one and here how much you should have 101 you should have okay then similarly the sum is how much we need to get just write n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d is the formula n by 2 means it is 100 by 2 is going to 50 then 2a plus 2 and 2 4 so 2a plus n minus 1 into d 2a we write 2a plus n minus 1 into d that is so 2a is going to be 4 that is 2a plus n minus 1 into d n is going to be here 2 there so 2 minus 1 that is 1 into d is going to be 2 there so how much you get in that it's going to be 6 this should be 300 the value for us we should get actually a value 300 if the formula is correct just try to run this but it's giving so much okay I need to multiply that I need to multiply so 50 when it's multiplied 2a plus n my okay with d I should multiply there correct when we multiply definitely we get this much big number so the counter value how much we got 101 we got but some of the first hundred even numbers is here 10 100 right that we got when we sum up them we are getting actually 101 I mean 10 followed by 100 we are getting so this is a loop with the help of this loop 100 times we are iterating it we iterate 100 times then it's getting printed similarly I try to show you once again the while loop but here what happens is okay but this time I want Can to I, yes please I think uh, the logic is wrong that I mean you have to hear number uh, counter by uh, want to increment for plus two 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 values for given uh, numbers I am saying first hundred even number sum Okay, first hundred even numbers. Okay, it's written there. The sum of first hundred even numbers is written here. See. Okay. okay. So it's going to be here one zero one zero zero we get. So correct because first even number is two, second is four, third is six, then eight, ten. That way you have. So it's giving us the required thing. Next one here, we enter a number from keyboard. So for that number we need to print a multiplication table. I want to print a multiplication table for that. So even in that also we use loop. But for that let us write actually a command line arguments program. So we give actually a command line argument program. So in that we pass actually two arguments. First one is number, second, second one is followed by operation there. So the operation may be there it is plus or minus or multiplication or division when we give any of those four so with that it's going to be giving you the required table it can print the table with the appropriate operation there so let us create some other table but this is going to be a command line application here write table creation the program name is going to be here table creation then click on next finish okay let me close this one here then come to table creation in this let me create here a new class so in the new class here here I mean print table it's going to be the class name print table this contains here any method now inside this I want to print a table so the table we need to pass table number we need to pass and second thing we need to pass actually the operation so first of all see here if ARGS then dot length we write here length greater than or greater than 2 or we write here ARGS dot length it is length less than 1 ok so less than 2 greater than 2 or less than 2 we need to print it system dot then out dot println 
system dot out dot print ln we print it as invalid num i mean just you need to pass the table number and the required operation okay it gives this message but you pass it either too many or too few like this it is going to give a message okay whenever the length is greater than 2 or length is less than 2 like that it is else we come to else part here we come to else part we come to else part here in the else part now we need to write the code declare here int num equal to so we need to now convert the given number so what how you convert right here integer dot then parse int there is a predefined helper class called as integer class it's called as a wrapper class this can convert the given number it is here args of 0 it should be converting it but in this process this may throw exception reason if you enter some abc in the place of number it's definitely going to crash therefore put a try catch block take your try then with try try to catch it try then followed by here catch then exception ex so exception ex we take like this so here we can print appropriate message it is system dot out dot print ln we print this as ex dot message or ex dot to string okay now first argument we have taken here now let us take the second argument so second argument can be like this char ch equal to it is going to be a string second argument is going to be string args of one then followed by here dot i take here char at that means very first character at the zero position i want to take from that now i use here switch case i can go with a switch case in this so using switch case i can do it so therefore here once again what i do okay but see here it's going to be uh, multiplication okay mm, therefore fine mm -hmm. so every time that we can take that's no issue it can be taken but operation we need to make it okay product value we require here so the product how we take it because we are going to use a while loop in that so while loop making that is difficult just this is an SCT actually this is an SCT um,
okay so we need to use in such cases the arithmetic operation based on that we need to do it so therefore what we do we write here some other function that's the only solution we have here so using the other function we can do it the else is getting ended here then this is ending the main method here let us write another method static print void print multiplication table like this we need to write here some method then we need to pass here the number int num we need to give like this here this we have to give in this manner so therefore here we need to write the required code the code is going to be this can in fact return a string so here instead of saying this let us do here string it's going to be returning something for us so here take the string builder sb equal to new string builder initially it is empty it's going to be empty now using while loop we need to do it int counter equal to here one now while counter less than or equal to 10 we need to do 10 times we need to perform the required operation we need to perform required operation 10 times therefore here write sb dot append we use here append so what has to be appended here we need to append a string here so the string is going to be like this first of all we need to have here the number so we write like this num dot to string then plus we take here followed by x then we write here once again plus here followed by here counter dot to string then similarly we put plus here then equal here then in, in the brackets we write this way again a plus is required here here what we do we multiply this num multiplied with here counter okay close this then dot to string once again we write we convert to string this one we are going to be appending this way here put a semicolon at the end here is the problem we get counter we have here okay now when we take hmm, so here okay let's find here integer i equal to new integer write it as num otherwise integer i equal to we can write it as num it is called as here boxing a primitive value is converted to integer therefore here if i put i dot to string it can work properly okay, but as far as this counter is concerned here in the case of counter we have a problem so therefore here you write it as new integer then here 
dot to string we can put similarly here also this one new integer followed by to string we can take like this will be convert into string here okay so it is going to be appending that way and at the end we need to have here slash n it comes into next line with that we put a slash n there so like followed by here counter plus plus like this we do it at the end we should return here sb right here return sb dot to string okay sp dot to string we do like this so this is what exactly only multiplication table this is for multiplication table similarly we need to do with the here similarly we do with the addition table print here addition table but inside this just we change it we instead of this x we put a plus here then followed by here we have a again plus in this this is for addition table similarly we have here some subtraction table print this is here subtraction table okay in such cases this is going to be minus just minus we have here and here also it is num minus counter we have like this then followed by we can have division table also but there is no point in having division table but still we can put it okay here we can take this as a division table slash we put here followed by in this this is what division table i make it division table i put then here i can make this one as num i mean here 1.0 f multiplied with num then followed by here counter like this let us do this we first multiply then after that we try to delete it but see this is going to give you okay so this is going to give you only integer let us take only integer because we convert into integer otherwise we need to convert this into flow type of data only in such cases we have a float value num this is 1.0 multiplied with num we use so that can give you a floating point data in the case of division so these these are the different methods we have written now here we need to use go with the switch case here use switch followed by ch we write here now inside this write case it is here addition so in such cases we need to call the method what is that method exactly print addition table here write this as print addition table then pass the num so what what is that num where is that num we pass the num here followed by break similarly we do with the other one case here it is multiplication we put cross only here so cross multiplication in such cases we print the multiplication table we pass here this one again num then break it next thing is what here we have case with the minus minus so we need to subtract now here so in the case of minus this will be subtraction table here it is print subtraction table we give num similarly we take the division part paste it here and use the division symbol okay then here use the division part of it and try to print it so come to this point then here make it and pass the parameter suppose these are not matching we go with the default here write system dot out dot 
print ln invalid operation like this we give the message now let us try to run this when we run it says this message here you ju just you need to pass the table number and the required operation but you pass it either too many or too few that message we are going to get now in this just you need to pass the table number and but you need to uh, but you need to but you uh, either too many or too few so therefore now let us try to execute this from the command prompt we need to go to command prompt from there we have to do it so this one is available in the d drive in the d drive the table is the the i mean the folder is this is the folder so in this folder it is table creation and in the bin folder we have the print table class now let us go to command prompt from command prompt we need to execute cmd we type here then d drive followed by cd here we click on this then edit and paste we go into the bin folder so once we reach there we need to print the table now for that we execute like this java then it is print table then we give the table number i want to go with 10 followed by x it should give us actually the 10 table it's not giving anything we passed here actually two parameters but nothing we are getting in this so why it is so the reason i'll tell you in the code we are just returning that value but not doing anything we need to print it so here write system dot out dot println in such cases it's going to print for us the value will be printed here it is returning actually there a string builder okay string it's getting returned there so same way you need to do it here so even with this also we need to do in the same way here pass like this and here also it is going to be in the same way passing the values okay here i do same now if i execute definitely it works i i expect it now i go to same command prompt again i press this it's giving here now 10 multiplied with 10 like this 100 it's giving suppose if i give here some division what it gives see it's giving like this you're getting value this way here similarly you can do with the subtraction here it gives these values but if you pass here more than 3 say some 6 it says here just you need to pass the table number and the required operation but you pass it either too many or too few like this or if i give only number 10 even now it gives same kind of message you just need to pass the table number and the required operation but you need but you pass it either too many or too few so like this it's giving prompt but whenever you give properly then here it can give you the addition so this program is actually printing the table whatever table we pass it's printing so this is exactly what command line argument with the help of that i could do it so this is what exactly a command line argument i could do like this but since see the code can be made very simple instead of writing this many lines we can make it simple but here there is no provision to convert the string plus into operator since i cannot convert the plus the string plus into an operator i cannot do anything so in the java language there is no provision to convert the given string into operator if required if required we should be in a position to convert into operator but unfortunately we don't have in the java language to convert the given oper operator into here the, the string into operator because plus is nothing but here string but if you convert that into operator definitely you can get the expected result so what happened here we could not convert the plus into operator therefore we have to write here so many methods here i have written four methods using those four methods i am doing it okay so this is a demonstration of the while loop